Hornsfield, Chairman of the United States Holocaust Memorial Council. Good morning. Every year we begin this ceremony with a tribute to the American soldiers who 60 years, 68 years ago this spring liberated the concentration camps. They entered places like Dachau, Buchenwald, and Matthausen, names once, once, names once unknown and now infamous. By 1945, these young soldiers, and they were very young, had become hardened by battle. Yet nothing prepared them for what they would witness when they entered these camps. War was one thing. Humans had engaged in war since the beginning of time. But genocide, this was new. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for presentation of the flags of the United States Army Liberating Division.
We are delighted today to gather to remember with so many distinguished guests among us. Today, of course, we remember first and foremost the victims, the millions of innocent men, women, and children murdered solely for who they were. And of course, today we honor the survivors whose survival came with a promise, the promise to remember. Ladies and gentlemen, Eli M. Rosenbaum, Director of Human Rights Enforcement, United States Department of Justice. Members of Congress, Ambassador Oren, Chairman Bernstein, Vice Chairman Bolton, Director Bloomfield, cherished survivors of the Holocaust, and other distinguished guests. For more than three decades now, my colleagues and I at the United States Department of Justice have been deeply privileged to pursue justice on behalf of Jewish victims of the Holocaust and also on behalf of victims of Nazi crimes committed against other groups. But the Holocaust and justice aren't justice and the Holocaust almost polar opposites. After all, the Holocaust was arguably the most terrible injustice ever perpetrated. Worst of all, it was a lethal injustice. In a paroxysm of anti-Semitic violence, the Nazis and their collaborators murdered some six million people, fully one of every three Jews who were then alive on the planet Earth. Seventy years ago this month, in the middle of World War II, in the heart of Nazi-occupied Europe, a flurry of military planning was taking place. Strategies were intently discussed and weapons ready for battle. But this was not the well-armed Germans. This was a small group of Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto who, despite having been starved, humiliated, and degraded, managed to mount the single greatest act of resistance during the Holocaust. Launched on April 19, 1943, the uprising stunned the Germans, initially forcing their retreat. Ultimately, the ghetto fighters held out for more than a month. They knew their odds were small, but they fought for their dignity as much as for their lives. Those defiant fighters, whose meager Molotov cocktails took on the military might of the Nazi war machine, won an important symbolic victory for courage and nobility of purpose. And they inspired resistance in places such as Minsk and Bialystok, and even Treblinka and Sobibor. <laughs>